Chris Garden. Coach, on games in the back-to-back -back situation, how often, how much time do you spend preparing for the opponent in the second game? Oh, uh, a ton. Um, I'm not very good, admittedly, at um, preparing for two teams at the same time. So after last night's game, I watched uh, one Golden State game, then I watched our game, then I woke up this morning and watched the Washington Golden State game. Uh, and then we had a staff meeting about Golden State and we uh, split up the responsibilities amongst the assistant coaches. So each assistant coach, if it's their game, they watch five games. So uh, we're pretty prepared. Uh, back to backs are a little bit tougher just because of the time crunch and the messaging as far as last night's game and tonight's game kind of being intertwined and, and uh, making sure that we're moving forward. But uh, yeah, the preparation is a little bit of a time crunch, but definitely ready. Thank you. Jonathan Fagan. Uh, the Warriors still close games with what could be considered a small lineup with Draymond at center. How do you like your latest lineup uh, with Kelly and Christian playing together against the assorted smaller lineups out there? And obviously this one too. Yeah, it's, uh, we've had kind of mixed results with it, I would say. Um, the ability to kind of change defenses has been good with them. Uh, the question is, are we able to get to some switching with those guys and containing penetration has been a little bit of an issue when it comes to the switching. So um, yeah, it's kind of still, we're, I think we're eight games in with Kelly and maybe six total with both guys. So it's very small sample right now. And we're trying a few things, but overall I like it. But some of those things would be true regardless of the lineup you're playing against. Is it more so the way they would spread the floor with, without a center in the paint yeah. or even dunk spot? No, yeah, you're right. It's uh, it is definitely um, tougher when they go small, and we have the big lineup. Not just because of the one-on-one -on -one matchups, but the help. And there's situations like I was watching the film with Kelly today, and there's situations where when we switch, guys like him, guys like Christian, are natural helpers, and instead of kind of staying home on shooters, and that's kind of like a natural thing for for those bigger guys and that's those are things that we pick on defenses doing so uh, yeah kind of maintaining the um ability to switch stay home and help only as much as necessary is an issue when it comes to defending five outs thank you adam spolin hey steven this is a little bit of a long shot but do you by any chance remember Steph's first game in 09? No, I don't. Uh, he, he took one three in 35 minutes. And if you go through the, you go through the game log, he took more than two threes once that, those first 10 games. Isn't it just amazing how much the game has changed just in, you know, 10 years? It's amazing. He's the one who did it, really. I mean, you know, shooting 10 threes in a game and, and all of that. And that's interesting that he only shot. I mean, I guess it is just a, a function of the way that the league was at the time because Nelly, who was the coach, you know, we were shooting a ton of threes as a team. And um, I believe we were towards the top of the league in three-point attempts. But I would assume that number was would probably be last in the league right now, whatever that number is. But uh, yeah, we were a free shooting team. Um, actually, when Steph first came, we had Monte and Steven Jackson. And Monte was more of a mid-range shooter, but Steven Jackson would shoot threes. Uh, Al Harrington would shoot threes. We had Anthony Morrow and Anthony Tolliver, and they were both three-point shooters. So we were... I guess trending that way, but that's interesting that, that that was the case and how different it is now. Brian Banfield. Coach, can you just talk about the pace that you all have been playing with these last couple of games and what was the what was the shift in the change? Was it the lineup change that you all had? 
Yeah, I mean, actually, our pace has been pretty good. We, uh, it, by the stat sheet, we only had two fast break points, so we classify our our transition points very differently than the stats, and we've been getting the ball up the floor quickly. I think Kevin Porter Jr. having the ball and just getting it up the floor and looking ahead to uh, Christian or Kelly. They've been running the wings, which has been which has been good. But we've been getting to our driving kick game earlier in possessions, and um, whether it is off a steal, which is a natural transition opportunity, or a miss where maybe KP gets the rebound, he pushes it. I think you noticed that when Christian gets the rebound, he can push it up the floor, maybe one, two, or three dribbles and give it up. And same with Kelly, and that's what we've been on those guys about as far as. And that was one of the things I learned from Don Nelson that um, when you rebound, you can start your transition with the rebounder by pushing the ball up one or two dribbles and then getting it to a ball handler. So those are the things that we're kind of incorporating and, and uh, slowly but surely getting to. But as far as last night, the, the uh, fast break points compared to, I think our numbers had us in the 40s as far as our transition uh, points. And uh, we classify it as, you know, basically playing against a defense that's not set because of our pace up the floor. Christos Sautis. Hello, coach. Hope you're doing well. What would you like to maintain from, from the game against the Clippers? And how important is it to set the tone from your defense event from the first hint of the game? Yeah, it's always important for us to set the tone defensively. <laughs> This is a good offensive team. Obviously, Steph creates so many problems. So um, being attentive to him and all of the problems that he creates and then having Draymond, although he does not shoot the ball very much uh, from distance, he just creates so much with his passing and his driving and, um, you know, Wiseman with his roles and, and all of those things. So uh, we have to be on the game plan as far as uh, making sure we're attentive to the details so we can get stops and run out. But they're also a very good defensive team. And uh, last night, we played a good defensive team, and we had one of our best offensive games uh, of the season as far as points per possession. So um, doing that more, getting the ball to the floor more, getting the ball moving, and then not um, kind of allowing the adversity that we went through in the second quarter or the, the um kind of issues that we had in the second quarter to affect the rest of the game. And I was really proud of our guys to be down by 21 at halftime and then cut it to five in the fourth quarter was showed a lot of fight from our group. Mark Berman. Steven, can you show your starters tonight? Uh, yeah, we're going to go with John, uh, Kevin Porter Jr., uh, Jay Sean Tate, Kelly Olenek, and Christian Wood. Thank you. Thank you, Coach. Yep. Thank you, everyone, for your questions.